Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. Got my Leet shirt on, I don't know if you can see it through all this stuff. Got my little, my little, uh, whoosh. there we go, we all Leet. Um, anyway, uh, so this, this is St. Patrick's Day week and I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything, uh, well, I don't know, Raymond could be, maybe, maybe have some bit of Irish in him, I don't know. But we got an Italian wine, got an American wine, we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing some uh, wine reviews, and I'm real excited because this is be the first official use of the Coravin system, um, and I've been not been able to record for about a month. And uh, every time I was going to try to record for one week, on my days off, things just prevented me from doing it. Let's just put it that way. And then when I get home from work from the day job, which really is a night job, um, you know, I'm getting home at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. The last thing I, I'll be honest, the last thing I really feel like doing is setting everything up. As you can see, I, I even got lazy tonight. I don't have the green screen up. Kind of difficult with the green shirt to do a green screen. All you just see is this in, in my hands. So um, another reason why I didn't really bother with the green screen because I really wanted to wear my Elite shirt. I, I got off of Facebook somewhere. I don't remember where. Um, but uh, anyway, the Corbin system. Now, I was bugging these guys since... Um, Texom last year to be a sponsor of the show and they never got me never got a response so I went ahead and just bought the thing because I really want one so um, I did do a test on it uh, when I bought it a little, about a little over a month ago I bought uh, a bottle of double dog dare yeah double dog dare Merlot um, just to test you know get used to pouring it and uh, of course I didn't think about it but it was a synthetic cork now actually i haven't done anything else with that wine it's sitting in the back in the kitchen there i haven't touched i haven't touched it since then i did taste a little bit of it it wasn't really that good it's like a three dollar bottle of wine four dollar bottle a total wine i don't suggest buying the wine okay if you're looking for something that's good i don't i would suggest not to buy it anyway um you want to use this with real cork now I'm going to assume both of these are real corks. I did not take the capsules off. I had planned on doing it and I didn't do it. Um, and I don't have my wine. Oh, I actually I do have a wine key handy. Now, when you when they demonstrate this stuff, um, this is the backpack O stuff that the almost the entire studio fits in. And yes, I even have a wine key in there. Um, Anyway, uh, when they test it, you can leave the foil on there. You don't have to take the foil off. But since I don't know if these are real cork or not, I'm going to assume that the Italian wine is real cork. The uh, American wine might be fake cork. I just don't know. Yeah, I'm not doing the approved method of taking the foil off. Anyway. Real cork, okay, cool. Because if it's not real cork, it's not pointless in actually wasting the argon gas in this thing to uh, to open the bottle. I might as well just open it traditionally and just use the uh, other thing, real cork. All right, cool. So we're dealing with real cork. So you want real cork. If you don't use real cork, the problem is that the hoil, the hoil, the hole that this needle does, you can't see needle because I have it all turned this way. So this little needle here, um, when it goes to the cork, um, real cork, it seals back up. Fake cork, synthetic cork, it doesn't. So the auction gets back in. You don't want that. Okay. Uh, it's about 300 bucks. Um, you can buy it online. You can buy it. Well, I don't know if you can buy it from the website directly, but you can buy it online from Amazon. I actually went to Total Wine and more and bought, bought one there. Um, 
Sorry. I hadn't yawned in like all day and all of a sudden now I'm doing it. Um, one of the places I wanted to buy one specs, they no longer, though they haven't resumed carrying it. Now, first of all to, I don't know if I want to call it like a disclaimer or whatever, but when you buy the system currently, they give you the sleeve. Apparently after they first released it, you had some people that were reporting that the bottles were busting. Um, my opinion from reading some of the accounts and talking to other people is that um, it's not the system itself, it's one of two things. It's either weak bottles or people just being stupid and pumping too much gas into it. And now you have, you're trying to maybe not literally champagne atmospheres, but champagne bottles are stronger bottles. They're built to handle the pressure. When you try to over pressurize these bottles, they're gonna break. So what they do is they give you a sleeve so that if the wine bottle does bust, it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt anybody and it will kind of keep the, it'll, it's gonna probably drip through the sleeve, but it, you're not gonna have glass go all over the place, okay? I choose not to use it. A matter of fact, that one, that one bottle I did, it, it, well, probably the gas escaped anyway because it's not real cork. Anyway, um, I've, I've tasted wine out of it. Um, I've tasted wine that's been open for a while that they, they poured more out of it. I've read a lot. It's, it does its job. Um, I have heard of a few people saying that they can tell the difference um, a, f a week or two weeks later from you know regular wine versus not. I do plan to do, just because I will, uh, my own little experiment with um, wines. And I, the thing is, people say, well, yeah, I, I, I heard it. I could tell the difference like two weeks later from when I first tried the wine. You know what? whatever okay wine evolves anyway in the bottle it's going to taste different or potentially can taste different two weeks from now has nothing to do with anything um wine does change over time um your your memory of how the wine tastes might change slightly you might think it was more or less of any type of characteristic so what my plan is is to buy reasonable prices you know reasonable bottles of wine i mean nothing crazy but i'm not going to also go get two buck chuck and try to um and try to do the experiment that way but um have a couple control bottles that don't get opened along with a bottle that i use the corvin on and then kind of see how wine tastes over time with that uh i know this has all been done before but maybe hasn't been documented on video yet anyway um <clears throat> So that's a little brief introduction about the Corvin. Just spent seven minutes talking about it. Let's get into the wine. Oh yeah, by the way, that YouTube guy uh, or gal, I'm not really sure who, who um, watched one of my older videos, talked about how it took so long to get into, uh, to get into talking about the wine. And um, it's just what I do, man. All right, so uh, demonstration of the Corvin. All right, so you've already got the capsule in there. Uh, you make sure that this little part here is resting on top of the foil or cork. Uh, you have your little clamp here. You press, oh, first you want to do a little push because it eliminates any oxygen in the needle. Then you want to push into the cork, okay, all the way. And then you're going to, you're going to tilt the bottle so that it's up like this, press it, and then it will pour some wine in there. We're gonna press a little more. The longer you hold it, the more wine will come out. And really the type, this type of pour is just about, right, just about right for doing reviews, okay? So then you're done with that. You're gonna, you're, I'm sorry, you're not gonna release the clamp first. You're gonna pull up and you're going to pull up. There you go. And it, it can be a little tricky. That shouldn't happen, but it did. But it might have been because I did that. You pull up, you'll pull it out, and it'll reseal. Now, they also tell you to, I'm not gonna blow myself with it. They also tell you to do this, to release any oxygen that might be in there, kind of, not that, just like any wine. And we're done. Okay, so now let's, Let's talk about the wine real quick. So this is the 2013 uh, Colezione di Paolo uh, Chianti. Uh, this is not a Chianti Reserver or class car or anything like that. Um, 2013 from Rufina, Italy. And um, 
I did buy this wine through the Wall Street Journal Wine Club thing. Now, um, total cost was a little over $97 for 15 bottles of wine. And I uh, quickly figured that out to be, um, I, I talked about this last time, $6 and basically 49 cents per bottle. Now, if you were going to buy this bottle of wine from the Wall Street Journal's uh, wine shop or wine store, um, it is, is $15.99 a bottle, and that's probably pretty consistent across the board. Um, as I talked about before, Lathwaite Wines out of UK, and they also have an American store, um, they sell a lot of these wines from Wall Street Journal. There's some type of deal between the two of them where they both happen to get it from the same people. And this is distributed, let's see if this is also distributed, imported by Lionstone International, Joliet, Illinois, which I think all the wines that I got, those, those 15 bottles, all come from the same importer. All right, uh, when I do the next Wall Street Journal thing, which I have no idea when I'll do another one, they'll probably be the same. All right, so who who are these guys? No, that's not what I wanted. All right, so um, the Corazione di Paolo, um, their winemaker is, and I just had it, Paolo Massi. Now, if you know a lot about Italian wine, you'll know that the Massi name is associated with some really fine wine. These people, as far as I can tell, are not the same Massi family that you know do the Campi Fiorne, um, Valpolicella, and that stuff, but they might be related. Um, is the Renzo Massi Winery, who um, I believe is the parent company of this. Um, their winemaker is Paolo Massi. Um, and uh, they're in Rufina. This company's in Rufina. They also make La, La Bastarda Pinot Grigio, Il Bastardo Sangiovese, uh, Lorenzo Mas, Masi uh, Chianti Rufina, and um, yeah, they have a couple of Chiantis. So I'm pretty sure it's the same wine maker, probably the same grapes, just a different label because they're marketing a different way. Okay? Um, so we got that out of the way. We can close that. We can close that and I can close this one too. No, that has something to do with shoes. I bought some new shoes yesterday. Don't kill me for the really bad accent, okay? There we go, I can close that little thing. All right, so let's check it out. Um, it is a red wine. It's kind of weird because it kind of looks a little cloudy through this, but when I, when I look through my hand, it looks pretty good. Though the glass probably could have used a little bit of a little bit of polishing too. I'll be quite honest. I mean, we did go through the washing machine, but it didn't really get wiped down like it should have. All right. Uh, now I did just pull these wines out about maybe ten minutes ago, fifteen minutes ago from my wine uh, refrigerator, which is, holds really steady at 55, 56 degrees, at least the top level is. And these wines were stored on the top level, have been on the top level for at least a month. Um, so they've been pretty steady at 55 degrees, so they're a little cool. That's okay, they've been warming up out here and they want this warming up in the glass. So on the nose, it's all right. Um, some red fruits. Maybe a little bit of wood on it. Almost a little bit of cocoa. It might be just a little bit too cold, but it's not too bad. Maybe like some sour cherry, raspberry on the aroma. And like cedar box, wooden box, things like that. And it, like, like a cocoa type of thing, almost like chocolate, cocoa, cocoa powder. Let's test it, let's uh, taste it. It's okay. Maybe I haven't drank many Chiantis recently, but I wouldn't peg this as a Chianti. 
I would peg it as a generic red wine that I would assume was American and um, was probably some type of Cab Merlot blend. Just saying. Now, since this is really only personally the second bottle of wine I've ever done with a Coravin, I really don't know if like, you know, when I used to, when I would, um, you know, when, when I would, you know, have the first glass, it wasn't always the best. So sometimes the second glass is better. So let's try it out this time. Kind of a long pour there. Oh, drip, 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 drip. There we go. All right, so let's pull it out. There we go. Oh, oh, there's a little bit of wine popping out of there. All right, so let's try it again. Let's see if... Uh, Let's see if the second glass, the second pour was better. Pretty much the same aromas, not much different. Hmm. Like I said, it's not a bad wine, okay, but it doesn't evoke Chianti to me. I don't know. I mean, I, I, if it, you gave it to me blind, I'd, I'd call it, you know, generic California Cab Merlot or Cab or, or Merlot or, you know, just generic red wine from California. Um, and if you told me it was $16 a bottle, I might look at you and go, well, it really should be more like $6 a bottle. So what I paid for it is about right. So not really impressed. All right, let's move on to wine number two. All right, wine number two. Now this wine, this one I'm, I'm pretty sure it should be pretty good. Okay, this is the our collection by Raymond, the inaugural 2013 as a California Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so this is a this is a well known winery in the United States. And um, it would normally sell for $19.99 a bottle. Um, and uh, just a little blurb from their, from their website, uh, the Calif uh, a California Appalachian offering from an iconic Napa Valley producer that reflects the winery's deep roots and pioneering spirit in California winemaking. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's, uh, let's go over to the uh, cab real quick. While that's coming up, let's get the wine poured here. Now, one of the things about this is, you know, one, why I, one reason why I really bought this, this Corvin was because I really wanted to be able to do these shows, and especially if there was, if there was a wine that I was really enamored with, but I knew I wouldn't be able to drink for, say, you know, two, three weeks, the vacuum system really isn't going to um, be able to preserve the wine with the same level of preservation as the Coravin will or should. So I wanted to go ahead and make sure I got something that would do a little bit better. All right, so I thought I picked Cabernet Sauvignon. Boom, boom, boom. Camera Sauvignon, okay. Oh, maybe it doesn't really give you much else. It's just a pretty picture on the website. All right, so anyway, um, 
Raymond is a very well-known um, uh, winery out of Napa, and you know they make they make a lot of different wines. So let's check it out. I'm liking the aroma here. It's kind of um, well, some red fruits, but a little bit of caramel. But also like a little bit of chalkiness. Yeah, that kind of confused me a little bit. Some leather, like 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 newer leather. But there's also a bit of like processed type of I don't want to call it a chemical smell. It's not a chemical smell, but it's like it's like you walked into a shop that has a lot of leather goods that are pretty pretty new. So maybe like you know the the aroma of of new leather um, is hitting you. But yeah, a little a little bit of uh, red fruit and some caramel. Interesting blend of aromas that I'm. I don't remember, I think I've ever had all this combined in an aroma, on a cab at least. It's got some tart fruit to it. Um, that caramel still coming through on the, on the, on the palate. Um, it's actually pretty, pretty light. Um, it might be because it is still a little cold, but I mean, we're getting close. It should be getting close to the ser to proper serving temperature around that 65 degree mark. Um, but um, it's kind of tasty. Um, I mean, it's a twenty dollar bottle of wine. It drinks pretty much like a twenty dollar bottle of wine. Um, I don't get a lot of wood out of it. I mean, I could see kind of just drink this wine on its own. Let's put it this way. I really want to swallow this wine. It is, it is a very flavorful, I'm going to say flavorful. It's not flavorful in the sense that it's an explosion of flavors, but it's a very easy drinking wine. It's got that caramel like quality to it um, with with red fruits, maybe some cherry, maybe some strawberry. Um, uh, it's not a, it's, it's definitely a fruit forward wine. It, it's not that it tastes sweet, but there's a there's this sweetness element to it that makes you want to drink it. OK. Um, it's a tasty wine. And it's twenty dollars, and if you buy, find this in the store or buy it from the winery at twenty bucks, it's about where it should be. I mean, you can get it for fifteen dollars. I think it'd be even better deal. But it is a pretty tasty wine. I I like it, but I wouldn't rush out to go buy it. Okay. It's one of those things where if it's, if someone's got it at their house, um, it's not going to suck. Okay. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, you're going to enjoy it. You're not going to be like this wine's horrible. Um, but I don't think you're going to, you're going to, um, necessarily say that this is the best wine you've ever had. Now I said this was real cork, but it feels like it's more of a, of a, not, not the plastic cork, but now it kind of looks like it's one of those corks that's not necessarily real, but I don't see anything coming out, but it also could take a while. So I'm pretty confident I can lay this down and it's not going to leak. Okay. It's not bad. But like I said, if you can find this for like $15, I think you're, I think it's a better value for that. Um, it is a, it is a 13, so maybe it needs a little more time in the bottle. I mean, it's only just now, 
you know, February or March of 2015. It, you know, it probably maybe was bottled. Um, it looked like it was wetness there, but that's just the light reflecting. Um, you know, maybe only been bottled, you know, uh, for a year before it was released. But, you know, maybe, maybe if it had a little bit more time, it might, maybe it would uh, develop a little more. But you're, you're not, you're not going to hate the wines, put it that way. It's an okay wine. Not bad. All right. So um, that's going to do it for this episode. So as always, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over here, over there to send me a few ducats to buy some more uh, wine and uh, more gas capsules for the Corvin. And um, click the links below. I'll have links to uh, the information that, that I found on this stuff. Um, and we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>